Hi guys, welcome to part three of Varsity Struggles. Yes, we are on part three and today we have the one and only, the tall, dark and handsome, God-fearing Mr. Champ. So Mr. Champ today is going to be telling us more about his Varsity Struggles and what actually happened that made him take 10 years to finish a four-year degree. <laughs> so baby, um, just give us your background, where you come from, what did you study, and where did you study? Simple and short, man, I come from the streets. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, hey guys? My name is Mr. Chancellor Jai, the leader of the New York School, champion of the winning team, man of high integrity, from the highest stars of society. But my real name, the one that was given to me by my parents, that I love so much was having parents. I love them is uh, Umbulelo, <laughs> Umbulelo Kiosi from the Eastern Cape, very small town called Staterai. Um, I did my matric at Zomo in 2003. I can't even remember, guys, it's been so long. And then I came to Johannesburg in 2004 to further my studies and I went to Wits University. Okay, so how did you find the application process? Was it easy for you or did you experience any difficulties? Um, it was a bit challenging for me because I mean, you, we were just doing it on our own. The only thing that they will tell you at school, they'll just say, especially, I mean, this is a village school. They just tell you, if I apply, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and then we started writing letters to like various universities to ask for application forms. It was a very long process where you have to write a letter, mm -hmm. ask for an application form, you fill it in, and then you send it back to the university. So that process, and I mean, I didn't really know much to such an extent that as I was applying, I applied for only one, <laughs> one choice. <laughs> Three times three because times. they said first choice, second choice, and third choice. So yeah. I said MPBCH, 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 and, or and whatever, and that is um, that is medicine at first. Oh, it's medicine. So I wanted to do medicine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and did you get accepted? Did you study then medicine? Uh, no, unfortunately not. But the way I found out wasn't really the the nicest. So after applying and sending back the the, the form. <laughs> Yeah. I sit back. I'm like, okay, I made it to Vitz now. I just need to make sure I pass. And then um, the year ends. The following year, I go to Vitz. I get the. Uh, they say to me, okay, give us your student number. I'm like, um, student number? Uh, I don't have. That's what I'm here to fetch. <laughs> and then they say no. So and then give. I, I I obviously had to give them my name and my ID number. They said no. Sorry, you were declined, and we did send mm. you the the stuff. That was the first um, first blow. And then what did you do afterwards? Because now you're here in Joburg. Yeah. Did you now go back to the Eastern Cape? That was not an option. I had already arrived. I had come too far to go back. So yeah. what I had to do, um, my parents had already like sold two cows. So the money was there. The money for the registration was there. Mm -hmm. So when I went back and I said to them, I think this it's the time to pursue my my career in music, <laughs> which, which was non-existent in my mind. I was like, I wanted to, but I, I'm joking. I didn't, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. But then they said to me, okay, no, the money is here. So just look for a few schools that um, offer computer as a course. I don't know what that means. I still don't know what, but black parents believe that at least one child in the family has to do computer. Uh, and then I found a college in Albertine, which was called PC training and business college, mm -hmm. and then I applied for. Well, I didn't have to apply. I just went to register for uh, <laughs> what's it what called? What you wanted to do at Vits? IT <laughs> IT te technician. Yeah. I wish I wish Vits had done that to me, but, but yeah. And then I applied for. I I registered for IT technician. Yeah. I did it for one year. Yeah. And it actually gave me time now to to apply and learn more about certain things because I was in Joburg, so things were sort of different. Everything was close by. Mm -hmm. So and then now you've got your IT certificate, and then the following year, do you now go looking for a job as an IT technician or what? Or um, did you then pursue your your dream of? Did you apply to right, to study medicine again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I applied. Yeah. But then I was, I, was, I was clever about it because I was like, this fits, I have to get in. So I applied for medicine 
mm-hmm. and then my points were not really really fine for medicine because they needed like a crazy amount of points i think yeah. i was i was just making it mm. with those points but then now i was like okay if i don't make it here i can't keep applying for the same thing and get <laughs> declining for decline for the same yeah. thing so i'm gonna apply for another one so i applied for a become yeah. and then i applied for something else uh and then i was accepted for become which is what i was avoiding the first time around yeah. which is why i just said medicine medicine, medicine, medicine. medicine. yeah <laughs> so become wasn't your first choice no, it wasn't. is it yeah mm. i just applied for it because i uh, the points you qualified. yeah i qualified mm-hmm. in terms of the points yeah. Okay, so how did you find it? Did you now go and study become? Did what happened after that? Yeah, I, I I went on to register because I did want to study at first. I, I think that was my I, I don't know if I I may call it a mistake mm-hmm. or my obsession. Mm-hmm. I wanted to study more at first, more than I wanted to study a particular course. Mm-hmm. So as long as I was gonna be at first, I could have studied anything. That's, mm-hmm. that's, that's one thing that I'm realizing now that I was just attracted to, to the name, you know, big mm-hmm. name, you're going to be studying at Vitz. Mm-hmm. And I think I wanted to prove some of my schoolmates in high school that said, no, from Etomo, you can never make it to Vitz. Mm-hmm. I wanted to prove them wrong as well. So it was, it was more of me wanting to be at Vitz more than anything else. Did you experience any uh, difficulties or did you, when you, not, when you are now studying uh, BCom, did mm-hmm. you enjoy it? Uh, no, was it just no? That's that's that. No, it it wasn't. It wasn't easy. First of all, I had a few glitches as I was registering. Mm-hmm. So I'm there first year. I'm re- I'm registered. I'm fine. Mm. I had a friend of mine, Usandu, so my best friend, mm. who went to Rao. So he was registered in 2004 already. Mm-hmm. So in Rao, what has ha- what what used to happen? Rao is actually UJ APK. Uh, for those for Ama 2000. Uh, <laughs> so what you what would happen is that you would register and then immediately apply for student funding or financial aid, whatever they used to call. It. Actually, they used to call it TEFSA. TEFSA. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it was TEFSA. At that time, this was back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> so you would immediately apply and then they would approve you. So that was my goal as well. That was my assumption with Fitz. So I was like, okay, as long as I register, I'll get financial funding. Yeah. But no, that wasn't the case. I only learned after I registered that no, you had to apply the previous year. So they said mm. to me, no, we don't have funding for you. You were supposed to apply November the previous year. So that meant that I was only gonna be able to pay registration and nothing else. I'm gonna, I was gonna be studying Gaskoloto basically. So you, did you continue and study until the end of the year or did yeah, you did. make a plan in terms of did you find another <laughs> bursary that paid for your school fees? I, I tried I, I tried applying for bursaries and stuff but mm. it, it becomes um, a bit challenging when you've already registered. Mm. So it, it was a bit of a challenge but then you could, I, I, I was like you know what I'm going to continue studying. I'm going to make sure that I pass and mm. then by the end of the year I use those results to apply for a bursary. Mm. Or failing which, then I'm gonna have to go and look for a job. I was ready to to go look for a job so that I can uh, pay for my school fees, and then I would then maybe if there's any leftovers, register for that year, continue. So I had a plan that was very, yeah, it was not very defined as well. So it was a very challenging year. That year was was very challenging on its own. So okay, so did your plan work at the end of the year? Did you now go and look for a job? Um, I, uh, well, I had to spend my December holidays. I went home just to refresh and then I came back very early in Jan to, to look for a job. And then I was in the library, like the whole of Jan, I was in the library, almost the whole of Feb, I was in the library. But then something very, very, very significant that I can never forget even to this day happened 24th of Feb, 20, or it was still called 2005. <laughs> No, no, 2006 actually, because this is the following year. Yeah. 2006, Feb 24th. I get a. So I'm sitting there. I'm like, no, man, I'm tired because looking for a job is very tiring. Mm. It's very tiring, especially you're sitting here. You're like, at least I have one year, Nyana. So it should count for something when you're looking for a job. But no, they're like, no, 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 you haven't. They don't care. (laughs) Yeah, they don't care. They're like, Mm. hey, just give us a certificate, and if you don't have 
mm. then just just I leave mean, it. looking for a job when you have a degree it's very difficult so i can imagine how difficult it is exactly yeah. exactly so i'm there i'm looking for a job on the 24th i'm sitting i'm just thinking about my life then a neighbor i hear and and like my neighbor calling out my name hey, mulelo, mulelo. Mm. i'm like yeah, what's happening? <laughs> no, 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 no. In the in the hood, they know me, especially way I. Yeah, that's a long story. Uh, <laughs> Bella, you know that saying where they say a prophet is never recognized in hometown. <laughs> so that's it's the same thing. So <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The the guy hands me. So he's. He has a phone in his hand. He's like, hey, someone wants to talk to you. Mm -hmm. I'm like, who could, who could that be? And then I'm like, I'll go like, okay, I answer the phone. I'm like, okay, it's CD from Vitz Financial wow. Aid Office. I'm like, okay, it's CD. So what's they going called on? you. Yeah, what's going on, CD? And then she's like, are you in Johannesburg? I'm like, yes, I am. And then she's like, are you studying? I'm like, no. They're like, okay, what are you currently doing? I'm like, I'm looking for a job. They're like, are you interested in, in studying still? There was a lot of questions. I'm like, yes, I still am, but um, I'm owing for it. Mm -hmm. So she's like, okay, would you mind coming on Monday? They said, would you mind? Would you, would you mind, mind coming uh, on Monday to, to to register? So I'm like, no, I wouldn't mind. Why would I mind? Are you serious? <laughs> and then they said, okay, we are going to grant you financial aid for this year. All you need to do is to come on Monday, the 27th, wow. to come and register. I'm like, wow, wow. look at God. Yeah. Only now I'm saying that. Oh, I was about to ask you, it, do you think that was destiny or that was God? No, that was yeah, God. That, that was, was God, God definitely. Yeah. So, and then I went on Monday. But then, before that, I got worried because as I was celebrating, I'm like, no, Sissy, I can't. I'm mm. still owing from the previous year. I'm owing something like 20 grand. Mm. So, uh, I still don't have money to, owe, to, to pay for that one. She's like, don't worry, we got you, got son. You. Got I'm you. like, oh, wow. <laughs> And then after that day, I started crying like yeah. the whole day, went to sleep. Yeah. Because, you know when you're going to sleep because you're happy and you're crying, that's yeah. the best sleep. So I went to sleep and then I woke up and then I told my dad that, okay, they, they, they called me to, to come and study. And then, yeah, Monday I went to register, my fees were cleared and then they paid for me that year. So now, it's your second year now. So do you do become seeing that you did not enjoy it in your first year? Do you do become or do you now register for something different? The thing is, I didn't because I hadn't planned to study that year. I didn't think about changing courses. And mm -hmm. the thing, is, and also you must you must think about it. First of all, my choices were were very limited, mm. so I didn't want to take that chance. And I always was a firm believer. Even now, I still am a firm believer that once you start something. You have to see it through. Sometimes it can be, yeah, yeah. It, it, it you can be a slave to that because now you're trying to finish this thing and it's just not making sense. So yeah, I went back. Fear of now took over mm -hmm. because when I registered, I was like, the year is already gone. It's already end of Feb. Mm. So yeah. I can't take many courses. I've got two courses that I had failed from the previous year, and I'm gonna repeat those ones. And then I took one that I considered easy. So I was doing three courses that year. Mm. I didn't want any stress. I just wanted to pass mm. because I had been through a lot already that year between Jen and Fab. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, I did those. Okay. I passed them. So, yeah, that's, that's basically what happened. Okay, so and then you move on to what, 2007? Yeah. And then now you, you're doing your second year. Yes, second I'm a fully first second year student. Ooh, that was the most confusing year of my life, 2007. Mm -hmm. Because now, the first year, when you are doing a BCom, there's yeah. generic stuff. You, you you all do the same courses. Yeah. You know, like they tell you, okay, this is what you're going to be doing. Yeah. Second year, you have to choose because that's where you get redirected into your own streams. Like there's marketing, there's auditing, there's um, insurance, there's finance, all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. That is where I found myself and then that's where reality kicked in that you know what you don't know what you're doing mm. Because now I'm sitting here. I took marketing and then if, a, a week later I dropped it and then I took uh, Auditing a week later. I dropped mm. it and then after that I took insurance mm. That's that's the one that I ended up studying and the reason why that was happening is because I had no guidance So I'll just hear from people. So if if a friend of mine or someone that I consider a friend 
says to me they're doing a, um, auditing I'll go and do auditing mm. and then someone else says no marketing you know and you can talk so I mean it's your thing, it's your thing. <laughs> and then I'll go and do marketing yeah it was very confusing do you think maybe uh, that was happening because you didn't have a defined job or you didn't know exactly what you wanted to do once you complete your degree and that's exactly yeah. what was happening yeah I was very confused I didn't have a defined job I didn't have I also didn't have a dream especially in that stream it just threw me off completely mm -hmm. when I think about it now maybe I shouldn't have studied it and but then you know there's there's something as, as I said that there's gonna be this small voice saying to you maybe you should just drop this thing and then I'm thinking no I've come too far already I can't do this you know mm -hmm. I, I need to continue even though you can see that it's not working for you yeah. so and I mean family at home they were not gonna understand as well yeah they were not yeah. gonna understand so I had to continue so now it's two and seven. You're not doing your second year. Everything is going well. No. The fees are paid. Um, yes, the fees were paid, fortunately. But then I had another challenge because this is when I really got to experience like the difficulty of varsity. Mm. Um, because I mean, 2006, I was only doing three courses. Two of them I was repeating. So now I'm challenged because I'm staying at home. There was a lot of uh, family stuff that was going on so i couldn't i couldn't i couldn't leave home i had to stay at home for whatever that was going on i had to be there and then obviously like we couldn't afford as well to pay because my my financial aid i almost said medical aid my financial <laughs> aid was only paying covering my tuition and traveling expenses because i was living around johannesburg so I would spend, I think, about four hours on the road, like coming from from Gatlehong to Vitz using Metro Rail, and then I would get home around about mm -hmm. ten o'clock at night, and then I, I would still um, need to do like chores at home, mm -hmm. and then after that, still do my tuto tutorial. Okay, I would still need to do my tutorials, mm -hmm. and then maybe sleep at like one o'clock, and you have to be up at four because you need to catch the first train, mm -hmm. and that really took a toll on me it really like i was always tired i was always asleep in um like during lectures so how did that like affect you okay you said you you were always asleep yeah. so as a result you didn't do as well okay i failed 50 percent of my courses mm -hmm. i failed them i had to repeat them again okay yeah all right so now you were repeating you you were not doing your second year yeah again in Again, and then you fell, and yeah. then the following year, what happens? Uh, I'm repeating the three courses, but then I still had, yeah, guys, I've always been ambitious. Sometimes it would kill me because I took those three courses that I, I, I had failed, and then I started doing some other courses. I started doing psychology. I started doing... Oh, yeah, I remember you told me this psychology. Yeah, that's, that's the time I was, I was going through the most, like, um, go, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's best. So I started doing psychology and I was doing something else. I can't remember, but I was doing a whole lot of other things on top of the ones that I was repeating. So this is 2008. But then in 2008, something significant again happens. What, what did God do now? <laughs> um, so God came through again. Mm -hmm. I was tired of staying at home because as I mentioned, 2007 for me was just a mess. Like yeah. I couldn't keep up. There was a lot of things going on. But the situation at home was a little bit better so i could afford to move out but then there was no money for it you know mm. but then in my spirit i was like you know what i'm actually gonna move out i am gonna move out i don't know how it's gonna happen but it's, it's gonna happen and then when i go to vets to collect my financial aid letter guess what happens mm. i get the letter they say to me my tuition my residence the meals and some yeah the meals are all covered for that year what? Did you apply for an upgrade? No, no, I didn't apply for an upgrade. It was God that applied for wow. an upgrade for me. Well, in fact, God doesn't need to apply. He just <laughs> provides. He just provides. Yeah, yeah, I cried again. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, trust me, when he says he cried, he cried. <laughs> yeah, I cried. I was like, oh no, God, I don't deserve this. I mean, I've, I've been so far away from you, but you did this for me. You know, how come you love me this much? But then that's when I experienced the love of God again. And I wasn't even born again, by the way, that time. Yeah. Uh, and then, but, I, you know, <laughs> so I get the money, mm. but then I hadn't, I hadn't applied for IRES or anything. Yeah. So I had to go around VITS, look like all the residences at VITS, looking if they've got space. 
until I went to a David Webster. I met this lovely lady, Batumambusi. Moya Wakupanzi. I get there, I'm like, Mama, I know that I didn't apply and I know the procedures that you have to apply for residence. But I didn't know that my financial aid was going to give me an option for ERES. Mm -hmm. So could you please, please find it in your heart to, to, to just do whatever you can. She was like, where's your letter of medical aid? Um, <laughs> financial aid. <laughs> I give her the letter. She's like, okay, um, there's, there's a room for you that's available. Wow. Room 1037. You can move in whenever, wow. um, I, I think uh, two weeks after that. Yeah. And I moved into res. Did you have blankets? <laughs> yeah, I did. The ones that I was, I was using at home. home. <laughs> it's not like I was homeless. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, I was at res in 2008. Yeah. Yeah, things were better. That's when I became vegetarian as well because <laughs> I was eating at the dining hall. Like her. Like her hey, things. She's been through <laughs> things, I'm telling you. So, so yeah, that was my 2008. I was repeating the stuff from 2007. Yeah, but yeah. everything now is better because now you've got accommodation, you've got financial aid, um, everything is here, the library is here. So, how did it go? Did it go well? Yeah, 2008 was, uh, was, was better because I had access to everything like mm. um, computer lab and libraries and mm. stuff like that. But then, as I said, I was too ambitious. I took on those courses, the ones that I was repeating from 2007, and then I took on like psychology and them, and I failed. Mm. And I failed, guys, again. And at this point now, I'm thinking, okay, God, I don't know. My life is going nowhere slowly, and I don't know what's gonna... You, you know, the, 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 the deeper you go into these things, Mm -hmm. the more difficult it is for you to get out because I'm thinking I have invested so many years in this thing and at home they are expecting me to finish because I mean I was gonna be the first one to ever ever have a degree yeah and now they've sold the cows as well and they, they sold the cows and they like dude we, we need the paper you know so mm -hmm. I was like you know what I, I've, I've got to make it work and then 2009 was my opportunity now to redeem myself mm. yeah I studied and I passed those that I was repeating, but then end of 2009, after passing, this is, this is now my third year, I've, I'm, I've, I'm done with my third year, I'm going to go on my fourth year and then get my degree. End of 2009, well, beginning of, no, no, end of 2009, I get a letter from the financial aid saying that you have exceeded the number of years that you can stay on the um, why do I keep wanting to say medical aid <laughs> on the financial aid? Mm -hmm. We can't help you anymore. Sorry. Mm. And this is the second time now you're being financially excluded. Yep. Financially excluded again. And I was sitting there hoping that a neighbor is going to hand me a phone and say that I've got a call from Vitz. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. Mm. I had to look for a job. That was 2010 was the most hor horrendous year of my life. That was the most stressful year of my life. I can still recall even to this day. I mean, I remember people were excited about Philip and, and all those things, the World Cup. But for me, it was, it was, yeah, it was a daunting year because I spent, I think, nine months in that year looking for a job. And looking for a job, just using a metric, knowing that mm -hmm. you, you, you've studied for four years is not an easy thing because you're thinking maybe this should count for something. Nope, it doesn't count for anything. So it was, it was very challenging for me. I remember I spent most of my days in 2010 crying. I used to cry, like, I would go look for a job and then they would promise me a job. They say, yeah, you can come back. And then when I come back, they've offered that job to someone else. Mm. And yeah. Did you eventually find something though? Uh, I did, around about August, I was already in the Eastern Cape. I, I was like, I can't take this heat anymore. And I had already started like a small business where I was just selling stuff like um, I was selling cigarettes mm -hmm. and socks. And so I was just asking my mother to help me sell those things in the Eastern Cape. So I'd buy them from here and then ship them over to the Eastern Cape. And then I decided, you know what, let me just follow my business. I think it's going to be, it's yeah, it's, it's going to be more helpful because this job thing is not working for me. But I was applying for jobs. And then as I was in the Eastern Cape, I got a call from Edcon and then they called me. Oh. Yeah, they called me for stock taking. I was a stock taker for, for some months. But then things started looking up after that. That one call actually opened doors because I remember now I got calls from various places. 
uh, inviting me for interviews and I got a job, but the job was only for the following year. Mm. Yeah. And in that whole thing, so I'm working for Edcon and then I was like, okay, they, they wanted me to work until Jan the following year. I'm like, yo, I already got a, a job for, 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 for the <laughs> following year. year. And this guy, he, he really like, he adored me. The guy that was, that was my manager at Edcon. Like mm. he, he really, he really liked me. He was like, yeah, no, I want to train you. Mm. I couldn't tell him that I'm going to leave mm. until this one day. I think it was around about the 20th because I wanted to go home, enjoy my December. I had had a very tough year so i was like you know what i just want to go home mm. and relax for the following year and yeah after that i just absconded i didn't return to work on that day after getting my obviously after getting paid <laughs> i didn't go back to work until the next year when i went back to when i worked to my new job now okay would you say like did, did you feel like someone was supporting you through this whole situation like from home from family who was holding your hand through it all? Uh, looking back now, I think more than anyone else, because the thing about when you are at varsity and no one at your fa like in your family has been to varsity mm. is that they don't know what you're going through. So even if they want to support you, they don't know how to support you. Mm. So when I look at it now, that's why God was always on my side that whole time, you know? I might, I might not have known, I would have, I, I may have thought maybe this is by chance or wow, what a lucky day or whatever. But when mm. I think about it now, God is always there, even mm. though I may have been distant because I didn't really know much about him, but mm. he was always there that whole time, you know? Mm. So yeah, I, I would say, but my family was, was always there as much as they could be. Yeah. Yeah. So now you are at your new job. Mm -hmm. Is your varsity dream now dead in your head? Oh, is this not the plan that you're gonna... In 2011, it was dead. Yeah. It was dead until a friend of mine that I was studying with uh, sent me his certificate, his degree. Mm. He sent me a screenshot. He said, yeah, I found it, found it, man. I got it. It, it hurt me, but mm. at the same time, it inspired me. I had to go back. But 2011, mm. I couldn't go back because I was just starting out, so I didn't have enough money. 2012, I still didn't have enough money. I made a very stupid decision in 2012 of buying a car prematurely, but that's another, another story for another day. And then 2013, I had to go back. Mm -hmm. I had to go back. I was more mature now. Mm -hmm. I, I sort of knew what I wanted to do because of the exposure that I had gotten at my new job. Um, and then after that, but it wasn't aligned to what I had been studying all along. Mm -hmm. The course that was aligned to it I only did it up to second year. So that meant if I'm, I'm, I want to continue with that, I'm going to have to study third year and fourth year. Okay. That's the only time that I'll get to get my degree. But I was, I was ready to do it because I was like, you know what, I'm working now anyway, so yeah. it's fine. I can continue to do whatever. And, and the company, fortunately, was paying for me. Yeah, I wanted to find out so good thing now were you in a better financial and emotional state when you went back? Uh, yes, I was. But I mean, when you're studying and you're working, it's, mm. that's another challenge now. I'm, I'm, I'm working and I have to study. Mm. And I wasn't only doing one course. They, when I went back, they told me that the points that I had accumulated, where some of them now had stopped being a full year, because there's credits basically when you, when, when you have to graduate. So those credits were actually half credits. They were no longer mm. full credits. So I had to take on two more courses. And, 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 and that's the time now I went back for insurance and risk management. And that is the same time that I actually got to meet this beautiful young lady next to me uh, as I was writing. And that was only in the, it, it was my second last exam when I went, when I met her now. I mean, if you want to know more uh, about this story, there is a video that we're going to be linking up here and it's called Get to Know Us. Is that how we met? <laughs> No, it's how we, how met. we met. Yeah, we met. It's, it's, it's how we met. I tell the full story of how we met. So one thing that I realized was that it had to be this delay. It had to take all this delay because after that, I mean, I, I already had a job. I, I had a car without the degree. But then because the dream was in my heart, I had to come back. And when I came back, this is when now I had to meet Uleto. And she's the one that... So God had to get someone. It was not enough. He saw that it was not enough that he always guides me because he felt like I was still misguided. He had to find someone 
that's gonna walk this journey with me and that's when i met uleto and and it's 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 been beautiful she's the one that has helped me to know to 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 know the lord that i know now and be this god-fearing man that i am and and i just want to appreciate her on this video and say thank you to god and thank you for sending this angel next to me and i hope that this video inspires everyone out there to say that it might take you 10 years it might take you 20 years but when you look back you're gonna understand that it was all god he had a plan for your life so don't give up.